Okay, let's talk about the GACE exam. And GACE stands for Georgia Assessments for the Certification of Educators. And the specific assessment we're going to be talking about in this video is the Program Admissions Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for the GACE Program Admissions Assessment, meaning uh, that you're looking to become an educator in the state of Georgia. And this uh, particular assessment is a requirement uh, for you to do so. I believe there are some ways where you can avoid this test, but clearly if you're watching this video, you have been told or you know you have to take the GACE Program Admissions Assessment, which is um, basically a measurement of your basic skills, reading, writing, and mathematics. And what we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at a math practice prom that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared for the math section of the GACE Program Admissions Assessment. So we'll get to that in a second, but first let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over the last several years I've constructed many online math classes to include a GACE Program Admissions Assessment Math Test Prep course. I'm going to leave a uh, link to that course in the description of this video, but all my courses are extremely comprehensive. And, you know, I do a lot of research of the math, the type of math that's going to be uh, on this uh, particular uh, certification exam. So I would say that maybe a good way to think of uh, the math that you need to kind of prepare for for the GACE program admissions assessment would just basically be like high school level math. OK, certainly algebra and geometry, you know, basic stuff, fractions and stuff. Uh, decimals, that as what, well, I mean, all that kind of mathematics as well, but you're not going to have to do like advanced trigonometry or you shouldn't see that kind of stuff, all right? So basically core level, high school level mathematics, you know, algebra, geometry, et cetera, certainly more than just basic math. So if you're going to become an elementary teacher uh, or your, you know, math is not your thing, you're going to have to kind of warm up to high school level math to, you know, make sure you could do well on this exam or this assessment. So let's go ahead and get to our problem here. So the way I like to do these little problems is, um, one, you know, tell you what the problem is. I'll give that to you in a second. Then I'm going to give you a hint and then I'm going to solve the problem. Okay. So we have something here and what I'd like you to do is factor. I'd like you to fully factor this. Okay, and I'll just say this for now. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to tell you what this is specifically, but this should mean something to a lot of you out there. This is, again, you know, basic level, you know, uh, high school algebra. Definitely, you know, the, the type of, you know, a skill that you certainly would need to have to do well uh, on this particular assessment. All right, so if you think you know what to do, go ahead and pause the video and do so. Um, and now I'm going to go and give a hint. All right. So if you don't want to hear the hint, clearly pause the video. So what is this? Well, this is a trinomial. Okay. We can call this a trinomial and it's a quadratic trinomial. Okay. And the way we, uh, can factor this now, by the way, I'm telling you to factor this. Now let's say I have the number uh, 40. And I tell you to factor 40, you would go, oh, okay, that's like 4 times 10. So 40 is clearly factable. Now, I'm not completely factoring it because I didn't, you know, I'm not doing the prime factorization, but 40, you know, I got some factors here. In other words, it's not a prime number. But if I said factor 19, you would be like, mm, uh, it's only 1 times 19. So if 1 is the only factor, then we would uh, call this value a prime number, right? But if you have factors other than one and the number itself, okay, one and the number itself are always factors, but when you have other type of factors, this is not a uh, prime number, right? It's a composite number. Uh, and then here you obviously have a prime number. So the same thing with, with polynomials, okay, like this thing here, there's no guarantee, there's like no rule that says, oh, there must be, this must be factable. Sometimes things are not factable, okay? Just like with numbers. But uh, with that is, uh, said, you still have to try to factor uh, a trinomial. So factoring in mathematics is a huge topic. So 
If this trinomial, quadratic trinomial, can be factored, it will be factored into two binomials, like so, okay? All right, so hopefully, um, you know, I know for sure, 99.99% of you out there recognize the problem that I'm asking you, but you may not remember exactly how to do it, or you might not quite be confident. You've kind of like, I think it's like this or whatever, so just try your best, okay? All right, so the answer is x plus 4 times x minus 3. All right, these are the factors. Now, uh, let's go ahead and check this out, all right? I could say, turn this around and make this into another little problem, okay? Meaning that I could say multiply these two binomials. You can actually, you should try to uh, do that if you um, are you know, still watching the video uh, at this point. <laughs> if you're listening to me, you're clearly watching the videos, but go ahead and multiply these two factors, or these two binomials, and let's see if we get back to this. All right, so hopefully you you um, you tried it, but basically we can use the FOIL technique, F-O-I-L, FOIL. So this would be first, outer, inner, last. I don't want to go off on too many tangents here, but we need to be able to multiply uh, first before we factor. So this would be x squared, this would be plus 4x, and let's see here, this is a negative 3x, and then here, this is a negative 12. And when I combine my like terms, I get back to this, okay? So, uh, meaning that these two were indeed the factors of this quadratic trinomials, because we can always check, okay? If you say, oh, these are the factors, well, if you multiply the factors back, you should get back to the original answer, okay? Now, let's talk about how to factor quadratic trinomials. But before I do that, uh, let me just stress again that factoring in algebra is a critical skill. Critical, 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 like five-star critical, you know, sirens critical, whatever you want to try to say, because if you can't factor, you will not be able to do a lot of other um, uh, math skills in algebra. You must know how to factor, and it's it's oftentimes kind of a, oh, not a, an exciting topic for students. <laughs> a lot of students struggle with it. So uh, if this is kind of bringing back flashbacks from your high school math or college math, whatever you want to take, that's okay. But this one, factoring would include things like finding the greatest common factor, uh, um, basically using doing problems like we're doing here, the trinomial, and using special rules like a squared minus b squared, the difference of two squares, is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And there's other things as well, and a combination of all this stuff. So you've got to know how to factor. It's very, very, very important. And uh, what we're talking about here is factoring a quadratic trinomial. And when I teach this, I like to kind of classify this as either a case one or a case two quadratic trinomial. So a case one quadratic trinomial is a situation where the x squared, when it's written in standard form, is 1. There's a 1x squared. In other words, there's not a number here other than 1, like, say, 5x squared. Uh, when there's a number other than 1, that's a case 2, okay? When there's a number just, it's just an x squared or a y squared or whatever it might be, that's a case 1. And these are very easy to uh, work with. So I'm going to show you a method here real quick. Uh, to factor these case one quadratic trinomials if you forgot um, your factoring rules. Now, one of, the, uh, one of the techniques you can use to factor quadratic trinomials, and I'm not going to get into it, this is a big topic, is what they call like a guess and check. You can kind of look at factors and you can kind of like kind of guess, um, guess and check what values go where, okay? Uh, so if you did that and you were able to figure out the answer, perfectly fine. Stick with your technique, okay? But if you were struggling, I'm going to show you a technique now I like to teach students because uh, um, yeah, it comes in pretty handy. All right, so we determined this is a case one. This is one right here. So what you do is you take this last number, okay, the number, then we have x squared x and a number. So we take this number, we're going to put this here right here, negative 12, and now we're going to write all the factors of negative 12. Okay, pairs of factors. Now, I'm going to show you what I mean here. 
So 1 times 12, 1 times 12, you'll see here what I'm going to do in a second. 2 times 6, 2 times 6, uh, 3 times 4, 3 times 4. So how can I get a negative 12? I can have a negative 1 times a positive 12, or I can have a positive 1 times a negative 12. Or I can have a negative 2 times a positive 6, or 2 times negative 6. I can have a negative 3 times positive 4, or positive 3 times negative 4. Okay, all these are ways or combinations of uh, factors of negative uh, 12, um, different combinations I can have. And you, can, and you should do it just the way I did it, 1 and 12. And the way I like to do it as well, I start with the least factors. Here's 1, I, here I go up to 2, I go up to 3. So I kind of go in this manner. Now I'm, ta I'm, you know, not giving you a full lesson here, uh, so you'll understand kind of what I'm doing. But still, you need to have a full lesson on this, and you know, really do a lot of practice problems here. But you know, hopefully, you'll see if you've never seen this technique to um, factor. I think you'll like it. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase this, all this here. Give yourself some work. All right. So uh, what do we do? All right. Well. We look at the middle term, okay? The middle term of, of the thing that we're trying to factor, okay? Obviously, we wrote down all the factors of negative 12, but the coefficient of the middle term here is what? It's a 1. Now, this could be 5, 7. doesn't make a difference. In other words, I can have like x squared plus 7x minus 12. If that was the case, I'd be focusing in on this middle coefficient, all right? So it's not 7, obviously, because the problem, it's 1. Okay, and what I'm looking at is the following. I'm going to add up, let's just add, okay, up these factors. In other words, negative 1 and 12 is what? Well, that gives me a positive 11. 1 and negative 12, negative 11. Negative 2 and 6 is 4, and this is negative 4. I'm adding these two things, right? 2 and negative 6, negative 4. Negative 3 plus a 4 is positive 1, and neg a 3 plus a negative 4 is negative 1. Okay, so I'm focused in here on this uh, coefficient. It's a positive 1, positive 1. So I'm looking at my little list here, and I go to the sum w uh, that matches this middle coefficient, and here it is. It's positive 1. So guess what? These guys here, the, those factors are the answer, okay? These are our factors. In other words, what we do when you factor a trinomial, you always have what, if this is an x squared, this is always going to be an x, and this is going to be an x, and we can fill in the rest right here. This would be a negative 3, and this would be a positive 4, and that is our answer. We wrote it like this, x plus 4, oops times x minus 3. doesn't make a difference. It's the same thing if we write it x minus 3 times x plus 4. Okay, so hopefully you find that cool. <laughs> You're like, that's exciting. This is revolutionary. This is the best thing I've seen all day. Well, whatever the case is, it is a technique where you can factor quadratic trinomials that I classify as case 1. Now, there's other techniques that you can use. And if you got this problem right, you know, and you just kind of use your guess or check method or whatever method you remember um, from when you took algebra, it's perfectly fine. Stick with those methods, okay? But if you were struggling and you want a kind of another approach, you can use this approach as well. It's a very good technique uh, to know. But if you, um, um, again, were kind of like mm, really kind of clueless on this problem, like, you know, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I'm just talking about like, Oh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Then that's an indication that you got, you know, some serious work to do on. Even of those of you that um, got this right, this is a kind of an easy problem. So it's no way of a <laughs> complete verification, validation that you're all ready to go for the GACE program admissions um, uh, assessment. You know, there's a lot of math here you got to cover. Geometry, a lot of different algebra topics, geometry topics, you know, uh, basic uh, statistics, probability. A lots of stuff that you got to be kind of ready, um, you know, to, uh, to do well on. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. So um, again, I'm going to leave a link to my Gates uh, Program Admissions Assessment uh, Math Test Prep course in the description of this video. So if you don't have a a, a good study plan right now, of course, my course I think you'll uh, 
really like. A lot of people went, have taken it uh, successfully, and you don't have to do the entire course. It's a lot. It's a huge amount of math. You, there's kind of a, a way you can kind of start, kind of figure out what you know and don't know, and kind of fill in the gaps. But you definitely want to take this exam seriously because. Um, you know, a lot's writing on. You're going to have to get through it in order to become an educator in Georgia. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 plus years. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you prepare for uh, the math on this particular assessment. And I'm posting new stuff all the time, so hopefully you'll consider uh, becoming a subscriber. If you like the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Uh, what's your objective as far as becoming a teacher? Are you going to go for elementary? Uh, middle school, high school, what subject, you know, what's drawn you to become a teacher? Are you going from high school to college? Or maybe you are, um, you know, basically going from one career to another. I don't know in the state of Georgia if you are, um, if there's other ways. I'm sure there is. If you're, let's say, like a retired military or you are an, been an engineer for 10 years, now you want to make a career switch and become an educator, there's probably other routes where you can avoid this test. But uh, nevertheless, whatever your certification, um, you know, protocol is going to be or whatever path you take to become a teacher, you know, path, getting your professional knowledge, professional certifications done. And there's various ways to get into the classroom as far as that's concerned. What is not going to change is um, teaching, okay, really your journey <laughs> doesn't truly start until you actually get in the classroom with those students, okay? And you're going to have to give yourself time to develop uh, experience. I like to use the uh, analogy uh, or metaphor of becoming an airline pilot. You can go to school um, uh, to train to become an airline pilot, boom, but flying simulators and the whole nine yards. But until you've acquired 10,000 hours, let's say, at flying, you know, jets, you're not going to have that experience and that, you know, professional confidence to do that uh, profession, you know, uh, well, okay? Same thing with teaching. Teaching, it takes time. It takes years to, to really find your own way, okay? So I always, uh, when I'm speaking to uh, those of you who are going to be teachers, I always stress, uh, don't forget about that part. It's, you know, um, in terms of get through your certifications, obviously, but when you get to where you're going, latch on to those veteran teachers that, um, you know, been doing this for a long time and learn from them. You don't have to be copycats of them. You don't have to like duplicate a hundred percent of what they do. You can have two teachers, completely different personalities, teaching styles, both wonderful teachers, highly effective. Okay. So what you have to do is learn from those teachers that are successful, have a lot of experience until you find your own style and you will find your own style of teaching. And that's what makes teaching a uh, wonderful career because you don't have to do it. Just, you don't have to, you know, be like, uh, you know, somebody else. Okay. I know that there's obviously common standards and whatnot, but you can, you know, let your personality shine and you should. Okay. You're because uh, really teaching is communicating. Okay, that's what it comes down to. But first things first, first things is to get through all your certifications, um, pass all these exams. So I definitely wish you all the best on this particular GACE assessment. Thank you for your time and have a great day.